Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Deed Harrison of Chiropractic Biophysics Seminars and Technique and president of Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit, our Spine Research Foundation. It's uh, January 2019, so Happy New Year. Hope everybody had a, a great, successful 2018 and that everybody's uh, rocking and rolling for 2019. Uh, this video will cover three of our uh, recent research publications uh, for CBP nonprofit. Uh, specifically, we'll address the issues with uh, radiation safety and radiation validity in chiropractic. Uh, first and foremost, uh, this particular uh, course uh, will be roughly 1.5 hours. Uh, it will be part of the CBP Diplomate program for the ICA. Uh, and the appropriate video file will be labeled for you uh, relative to the study name. Uh, just to reiterate, CBP Nonprofit has a plethora of peer-reviewed publications, but if you go to our website, cbpnonprofit.com, you'll see a list of all of our 224 peer-reviewed publications. Uh, what we're doing uh, for the ICA Diplomate uh, for CBP is we are reviewing each one of our 224 peer-reviewed publications. And likely speaking, by the time you watch this, uh, we'll have more than 224. So the, basically, the sooner you get start, started on the ICA Diplomate for CBP, uh, the faster you'll get done, really, in terms of the overall workload. Uh, because as we publish new papers, we will add more content to this Diplomate. Uh, so this particular uh, series covers our paper that was published in 2018 in the middle of the year in the journal Dose Response. Now Dose Response is a true international uh, dose response for different so-called toxins in the environmental uh, environment. Do they actually create problems uh, with human health and disease? And at what dose do they create potential human health and disease? Uh, so this is a really high impact PubMed journal in its field. Uh, we were very excited to be published in this journal. In fact, it was the first time we were ever uh, presented in this journal as far as our work. Uh, the lead author, Dr. Paul Oakley, our colleague, PhD, uh, Dr. Jerry M. Cutler, and then myself, Deed Harrison. Uh, together we teamed up and we put forth this particular project. X-ray imaging is essential for contemporary chiropractic and other manual therapy spine rehabilitation practices. Radiography increases benefits and reduces risks. Specifically, we're referring to the spine. Uh, this was published in the April to June issue of Dose Response 2018, uh, pages one through seven. Uh, the issue with this particular uh, project is, in fact, uh, this is a very controversial project uh, in chiropractic and in healthcare in general. To advocate that radiation increases benefits and reduces costs is actually uh, going against the norm, and we'll talk about this. Okay, so Paul Oakley and I and Jerry Cutler wrote this article in Dose Response, in part to have a voice to say, you know what, these choosing wisely recommendations are not appropriate for many types of physical medical interventions. If you're going to say imaging doesn't apply, it simply means to me, you don't understand the way the spine works, okay? That's a biomechanical fact according to my world. Now, here's what we did. We said, you know what? Position number one, why do we wanna x-ray somebody? Let's not talk about red flags, fractures, tumors, infections, dislocations. Let's not talk about that because everybody agrees you have to image. Let's, let's talk about this. Okay, a patient comes in and they have a complaint and you're going to look at them externally to try to judge the shape of the spine. Can you judge the shape of the spine as what it will look like on radiography or MRI or CT? Can you judge that externally? The answer is a resounding no. 
So what we did is position number one, we said, if you look at somebody in the sagittal plane, for example, the ear relative to the shoulder, it's well known in rehabilitative circles that this is called the upper cross syndrome. The upper cross syndrome means your head's forward, you have a weakening or an inhibition of the anterior spine musculature, your shoulders are gonna be rounded forward, they're going to be in internal rotation and protraction of the uh, scapula glenerohumeral humeral joint. Okay, so we see this in this mock patient. We go, okay, there's an upper cross syndrome. People now in healthcare understand that anterior head translation actually correlates to or predisposes to a number of different types of patient complaints like headache, uh, neck pain, arm pain, even low back pain, specific to this idea of choosing wisely, right? So let's say I x-ray this patient. What are the odds that they're going to have a good cervical curve? You don't know. When you image, I could have a patient like this who has a good cervical curvature and they have mild to moderate anterior head translation. Or the person I image them could have mild to moderate anterior head translation, but they have a straightening of their cervical curve. You can't see that externally. And then worse yet, what if the person has a complete cervical kyphosis starting in the mid and low cervical spine, giving rise to the anterior head translation? Externally, you don't see what's going on with the spine. The only thing you see is this upper cross syndrome. Now, if you're a physical medicine person or a PT or a chiropractor that does some kind of structural rehabilitation, what type of exercise do you give this person? Well, classically, people are going to strength train the extensor and the flexor muscles. They're going to give opposite posture exercises, which we call mirror. Uh, mirror image in CVP. So we're going to pull the ear backwards and we're going to pull the shoulder girdle backwards. Now, if somebody has a good curve, that's appropriate to do because if I do some rehabilitative postural based exercises, when I pull the ear backwards, it creates a kinematic pattern where the upper neck will flex and the low neck will extend. Well, this neck actually needs that. That's not so bad. But what about these two necks? What if you create more joint backwards bending in the low neck in these two x-rays here, and then more upper neck flexion? That's actually going to worsen this person's alignment, and the potential for a negative outcome is there. If you do the exact same thing to each one of these three x-rays based on the appearance of their posture, you are not going to have the exact same outcome. That is absolutely absurd. It means you don't understand how the spine works. Okay. This information on the x-ray intimately affects A, my initial working diagnosis. It tells me what they have. One of these is true scoliosis, one of these is pseudoscoliosis two entirely very different things that I can't tell from the posture. And then B, it drives my intervention. My intervention will be different based on these two x-rays. It changes my treatment, okay? So my treatment is driven by what I see. This is the challenge to get people that endorse this choose wisely, whether it's chiropractors or internal medicine boards to understand. They think it doesn't change your, your intervention. Yeah, it does. If you work with the alignment of the spine, it entirely changes what you do. Okay, that's number one. Okay, so point number one is about posture and x-ray. And then we also go into a couple more points. Now, so I really covered two of the papers in, in the journal Does Response. And what we'll see is coming up in the next sessions, the next videos, we'll see what the response to these two papers was from the chiropractic profession, the research community, in terms of letters to the editor to these two articles. Hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. I'm Dr. Deed Harrison.